What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Average Bros Media YouTube channel. Today we're doing our first official video and it's a part install. We're going to be installing Brembo brakes on the front and rear of the 2005 Legacy GT. So first and foremost, we want to make sure you have the proper tools so you don't get midway through and realize you forgot something. You're going to want to make sure you have a set of four jack stands, a jack to get the car lifted up onto the jack stands, set of sockets, torque wrench, a breaker bar, and then a few other things are going to help make the job go a little bit easier. Uh, make sure you have some brake cleaner for those new rotors, copper anti-seize for the bolts, and then a caliper spreader like this one here. This one's a Lang caliper spreader. Not entirely necessary, but it will make the job a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and get the car lifted up and ready to go. So before we get the car all jacked up, we want to make sure we break the nuts loose on the wheels, and we'll go ahead and get that done. Okay, so we got the car all jacked up. It's resting on four jack stands and we have our four wheels, uh, the nuts broken loose. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those wheels off and get ready to pull off the old rotors and calipers for the new stuff to go on. So let's go ahead and get started. So now that we have all four wheels off of the car, we need to focus on getting the calipers off. So we're going to want to use a little bit of PB blaster on each of those bolts, loosen them up, and hopefully not break them off in the process. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so we are on to the passenger side of the car. Uh, we were able to get the rotor and caliper off on the other side. Unfortunately, we didn't film it, so we'll film this side uh, for the walkthrough. Um, caliper bolts are both broken loose. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is loosen up the brake line uh, so that when the caliper does come loose, I can set the uh, caliper down and leave the brake line attached until we actually pull all of those off and drain out the old fluid since we're replacing the entire system. So we can go ahead and break this loose. get that brake line off of where it hooks up to the strut and disconnect that. Uh, that's just a 12 mil bolt and then the back side of the caliper as I mentioned before is a 17. So we're pulling both of those off. And then you can use a screwdriver to decompress the pads and push the pistons back in so that there's less friction to pull this guy off. Um, it's obviously still a little snug, but it comes off just like that. Uh, and now is the fun part. So these rotors have likely been on the car for a while. Um, what we found worked on the other side was using uh, a block of wood where you can between the dust shield here and a mallet. So I'll go ahead and skip forward to doing that. Okay, so I have my 2x4 that I'm going to use uh, between the rotor and the mallet. Uh, before we go ahead and do that, a good safety precaution, throw some of your lug nuts, two is probably sufficient, uh, back onto the studs so that way when the rotor does break loose it doesn't go flying and potentially nail your car um, or anything else near you. So now that we've got those back on, we can go ahead and use this here. So. Like I said, uh, it's tough to see from that angle, um, but there's about probably a quarter of the, we, uh, the rotor exposed behind the dust shield. So just working your way through that. 
uh, and kind of up and down, and then we'll rotate the rotor when we need to. Okay, and as you can see, it is not necessarily an easy process. That rotor's still on there, so just kind of continually working around. And there we go. So once it breaks loose, you can pop these lug nuts back off. And then carefully grab the rotor off. And then that completes the fronts, so we'll go ahead and jump to the rears. Okay, so we are on the last rear rotor. Uh, we're going to go ahead and break these caliber bolts loose. Lewis already got most of them off, so we're going to go ahead and pull that off um, and then show you guys how to get the back rotor off once we have the caliper released. So once the bolts are off, same trick as the front, you can poke a screwdriver in through the caliper to press those pads back and release them from the rotor. Okay, so the first bolt is off. We're gonna pop that second one off. Awesome, so we have both of the bolts out. We're folding that caliper up. Uh, again, the brake line is still connected currently until we get the new ones ready to go on. And then a nice little trick that we just found out is that there are uh, a few threaded holes on the rotor here, so you can actually screw a bolt in, uh, and that'll press the old rotor off and eliminate you having to sit there and pound it with a mallet or wood like we did on the front. So you just tighten it down until it pops that rotor off. And then we can go ahead and remove those lug nuts and pull this rotor off. Beautiful, and that is the last of the four uh, original rotors. So we're gonna go ahead and start prepping for the Brembos to go on. All right, as you can probably tell by the change of shirt, it is day two. We didn't quite get as far as we wanted to last night, so we were on to round two of trying to install the Brembos onto the Legacy behind me. Uh, so last night, as we saw previously, we got the old rotors and calipers off the car, uh, so we're pretty ready to start installing the new components. Um, in between then, we went ahead and cleaned up the Brembo calipers, pulled them all apart, uh, rebuilt them with new factory seals and dust boots, as well as installed the Hawk HPS 5.0 pads that we're going to be using all around. So we're going to go ahead and start working on the last bit of prep work to get these guys installed. We have to remove a dust shield on the back uh, two axles and then prep the surface where the rotor is going to be made into it and go ahead and get these guys installed. So we'll flash forward to that. So as I mentioned, we've got this dust shield on the rear here that needs to be removed at the spot welds that are going around it uh, in order for the new rotor to work. Um, so the best way to go about that is with a chisel and a hammer. Uh, and hitting just right near the spot welds to pop those loose. So we're going to go ahead and do that on the back driver's side of the car real quick. Alright, as you can see we got the dust shield off of the rear of the car. Um, now we're left with a little bit of sharp metal where those spot welds were. Uh, we're going to go through with the hammer and chisel that we used to get it off, uh, clean those up, and then we'll go through and just grind them down smooth once we've gotten everything off with the hammer and chisel. Awesome, so we broke loose everything that was loose around there, um, so now we're going to find a little grinder uh, and smooth those out. Uh, just to avoid any sharp edges on there for later. All right, so we're gonna start smoothing out those spot welds that are left behind like I was just talking about. Uh, the real goal here is just to get rid of those rough edges, uh, nothing to catch your finger on, and clean it up so we can throw some paint on there to protect it from corrosion later on. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got a nice little Dremel here that's gonna help us do that. Awesome, so we'll show an up close shot here, uh, but you can go ahead and see that all those edges are smoothed out, uh, and nice and ready for paint. So we'll go ahead and prep for paintwork. 
Okay, so we have all the spot welds cleaned up. We are ready to throw some paint on there. I uh, need to do a little bit of prep work before we get there. Uh, so we want to make sure we tape off our parking brake assembly. Obviously, we don't want any paint or debris getting in there. Uh, and then set up some newspaper to avoid getting paint on any of the other suspension components that are exposed back here. So we'll go ahead and fast forward and do that real quick. And then once you've got that all good to go, um, I'm using just some satin black Duplicolor automotive paint. Uh, throw a nice layer of paint over that just to prevent any future corrosion. Okay, so while we wait for the paint to dry on the backing plates in the rear, we're going to go ahead and get the old calipers and brake lines off. Um, right now, it's hard to see, but we have the old caliper sitting on a bucket, so it's not putting any extra strain on that brake line. And we're going to go ahead and break that banjo bolt loose on the back side of this uh, and get that brake fluid drained. Okay, so the old caliper is off. We have the bolt out. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is pop the cap off the master brake cylinder and, and let that brake fluid out. And so that's going to slowly drip out. We'll just let that drain for a little bit. Okay, so we're going to install these stainless steel StopTech brake lines on the front Brembo caliper. Uh, the main thing to know here is make sure that you get a copper washer on the side closest to the nut. Push that through. And then another one on the point where it's going to be making contact with the actual caliper. So just like that. And then go ahead and install that there. We'll tighten it down by hand as much as we can. And we obviously don't want to destroy the threading inside the caliper, so it's important to follow the torque specs on that bolt. Uh, it calls for 14 foot-pounds of torque, uh, so we have our torque wrench set. Should click here pretty quick. Yep, just like that. Awesome, and that brake line is installed. We'll go ahead and do the next one real fast. And now we have our brake lines installed, so we're going to go ahead and get these put on the car. Okay, so we're now at the point where we can actually mount the rotor and the caliper to the car. Uh, prior to doing so, you want to make sure that you clean off this hub face right here. Uh, a wire brush and some steel wool does the trick there. Just want to make sure you get off any surface rust before putting on the new rotor. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and mount the rotor. Um, we're using the DBA Club Spec 4000 series, uh, the T3 on on this car. Um, when rotors come fact from the factory, they have a slight coating of oil on to protect it from rusting. So you just want to take that uh, brake cleaner we talked about earlier and clean off the rotor, make sure you get all that oil off prior to mounting it to the car. Okay, well with that ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and get the caliper mounted. And using that copper seize we talked about, copper anti seize we talked about at the beginning of the video, you're going to want to coat your caliper bolts. Uh, I've already gone ahead and done that, um, but just coat it so it gets a nice thorough coat around the entirety of the bolt. This is going to help protect it from getting seized later uh, and having it break off, which is a pretty common issue on these, these bolt, uh, calipers. And it's worth noting, um, these calipers are directional, so you want to make sure you have the bleeder valves facing upward. Um, that's the way to tell which way, which way the caliper is getting mounted to the car. So just make sure you have those upward, um, otherwise you're not going to be able to bleed them successfully. Okay, so we skipped ahead just a little bit, but we have the caliper mounted to the vehicle. Um, the bolts on the back are 19 millimeter bolts, uh, and those are going to be torqued to 80 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, we'll go ahead and mark that on the screen as well just to make it easy. Um, the next thing you want to do is get the brake line all hooked up. Uh, as you saw earlier, we already hooked it up to the caliper. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and mount the bolt, which is a 12 millimeter bolt, to the strut housing. Uh, get that part connected and then actually connect it to the hard line on the car. Um, so that is connected. Um, getting the 
stainless steel brake line connected to the hard line uh, is pretty simple. It's a 17 millimeter box wrench for the part on the stainless steel line and then a 10 millimeter box wrench for the hard line uh, and you can go ahead and just tighten those down uh, to hand and then we'll check the torque specs on those to make sure we have them tightened properly. All right, so we have the brake line all hooked up to the hard line of the car. Um, and that's one of those things just when you feel it snug, go ahead and stop. Uh, the last piece of that is replacing the clip that you took off originally uh, from the factory. So the stop text came with a replacement piece of that, as you can see here. Uh, and that just slips under the bracket to hold those lines in place. Um, it's definitely a tight fit, so you may need a rubber mallet to kind of help finesse its way in there. But once you have that, uh, Nice quick test of the wheels, do a little turn both ways, make sure that you're not pulling on the, the brake line at all, and, and otherwise the fronts are good to go until we start bleeding them. So in order to fit the rear Brembo's on the back of the Legacy, you have to use an adapter bracket like this one. Uh, this particular one is from K&S Brakes, and I know they make one for most applications. Uh, this is the V1 bracket, um, so I don't know about the V2 and the cars that that goes on. But for this particular situation, uh, once you mount the bracket on here, you actually have to shave away a little bit of the metal off of this arm behind there, just enough for that bolt head to sit there and clearance it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, the best tool that I found to get that started with is a grinder uh, with a cutting wheel on it. Um, and mount your bracket on where, like through the backing plate where it would go. And then I've just marked with a Sharpie where we're going to actually need to make those cuts so I don't take away too much metal or sacrifice any structural integrity. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so we've clearanced off most of the metal that we need to for that bolt head to fit there uh, with the grinder, as I mentioned. Just to do a little bit of cleanup and smooth that out, uh, we have a hand file and then a little Dremel with the wheel on it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just clean that up a little bit, smooth it out, and then we'll take some sandpaper to it and paint it so it doesn't have any issues with corrosion or rust down the road. So it looks like I was able to get everything I needed done with that little Dremel tool. Uh, so we have a nice smooth surface there. I'm going to go ahead and test fit the bracket one more time. Okay, so we have the rear portion uh, all ready to be buttoned up, get the caliper and rotor on there. Um, as we mentioned previously, we had to do a little bit of grind work on this here to make room for the bolt head uh, of the adapter piece. Um, went ahead and sanded that down and then painted it all black um, to prevent from corrosion and it looks stock from the factory. So we'll go ahead and get the rotor mounted up. Again, these rear rotors are the same as the front. Uh, they're a DVA T3 Club Spec 4000 series rotor. Uh, these particular ones are an adapter rotor meant to work on the Legacy. Um, I got these from K&S Brakes. So once we get the rotor all on like that, uh, Lewis is under the car to help line up the caliper and get those bolts in. Uh, the way I did it was mount the adapter to the brake. Um, that way it required less grinding of this piece here, so just take off as little metal as possible. Um, and then you use the long hardware that came with the adapter to attach to the caliper and that's torqued to 35 foot-pounds uh, and we'll use the shorter hardware to attach the bracket to the car uh, and again 35 foot-pounds of torque there as well. Um, one thing to keep in mind is make sure you use the anti-seize on all bolts um, so the bolts going into the backing plate and adapter already have anti-seize on them ready to go so let's go ahead and dive in. And as you're doing this, we found the easiest way to go about it is throw the top bolt in first, get it snug, about hand tight, uh, just so it helps line up the bottom one, and then we'll go back and torque those to spec second. Perfect, so we now have all the bolts torqued to spec. Uh, the brake is fully attached. The last thing to do to get this rear end all buttoned up is hook up the brake line. Um, so as we mentioned previously, when we were detaching the rear brake line, we found it was easiest to uh, un unscrew the actual bracket that holds the brake line to the control arm. Uh, so that's still loose uh, and that'll help when we're hooking up the new brake line. So pretty simple. Um, the main thing you want to make sure is that that is all sealed up tight. Uh, just going until it's snug. Uh, you obviously don't want to over tighten that. Um, and then we'll check for brake, uh, leak line, or brakes in the, leaks in the brake line uh, while we are 
bleeding the system later on. Once the brake line is all tightened back up and you have the bracket reattached, we can go ahead and use this little metal slide that goes uh, against the bracket and the brake line to hold it into place. And a rubber mallet will help tap that back into place. Awesome, and the rears are good to go. Uh, so we've got all of the brakes on the car finally. Okay, so finally after a long two days we have the brakes all installed. They have been bled. Um, for the sake of time in this video we didn't show the actual bleeding process, but when we install the brakes on Lewis's car we'll make a separate video for actually how to bleed these brakes. Uh, up next is getting the wheels back on the car, lowering it down, and then taking it out to get the pads bedded. So let's go ahead and do this. We got the car back on the ground, it's good to go. So the final step in this process is bedding the brake pads. So all brands are going to have a little bit different instructions. Uh, these Hawk 5.0 pads uh, in particular say make 6 to 10 brake engagements from approximately 30 to 35 miles an hour, applying moderate brake pressure without coming to a complete stop. And immediately following that do 2 to 3 brake engagements from approximately 40 to 45 miles an hour with hard pedal, pedal pressure without coming to a complete stop. You don't want to drag your brakes, and then after that, you let them cool down for 15 minutes, and we should be good to go. Okay, that is going to finally wrap up the Brembo brake install on the 2005 Legacy GT. I'll go ahead and post some of the information that I found useful down in the comment section below, different torque specs, uh, the procedure for bleeding the brakes, what order you go in, uh, and the links of where I bought the product that I used in this install. Um, if you liked what you saw on this, you want to see more of our build on the 2005 Legacy GT or what we're going to be doing on the WRX in the future, please hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, we're also on Instagram and Snapchat as Average Bros Media, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. <laughs> Look, this side was as easy as the one on the other side. I should be able to break it. Or not. Oh, turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> Talk. <laughs>